Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Right guys, progress report on the Lotus first of all. There we go, we've got one bottom end pretty much there now. Um, the only thing we are waiting for is the pickup pipe, the new pickup pipe um, and gauze to go on the bottom because as you've seen in the earlier video when we were stripping this, you've seen the state of the pickup. Um, may have been something to do with, with the issue. But anyway, you can see we've got ARP stud and nut kit gone in there. Um, it did have one in before, but we've replaced that. Got a brand new one. All the pistons in there now at mid-level. See the block looks absolutely fantastic with the new core plugs and the front cover. Looks lovely in the silver, as does the oil filter housing and pump. Um, so spoke to the customer this morning and although this cylinder head was the what looked like the original lotus gray um, he's quite happy to go with the silver i said as we've got a green block um, this is the this is a lotus green anyway a classic lotus green i said with the front cover um, and all the rest of it i think we should go with the same silver otherwise it's going to look a bit mismatch um, we've got the black sump there and obviously the the dark rocker cover um, so I think this is going to look absolutely lovely when it's all together so all Paul is doing now he's assembled the head obviously give it a thorough clean um, done his usual strip it two or three times and give it a clean make sure it's it is very clean but you can't be clean enough in this game um, so he's done that he's just going to take it over there in a moment and assemble all the cams and what have you and then this head is going on right guys I've got a little interesting job here that I've um, that I'm in the process of doing. If you see down there, I've done four pistons already and I'm just on the other four. So let me just explain this from the beginning, what we've got here. A couple of months ago, actually, we had a V8 4.2 block, uh, Rover V8 block in to be bored. Um, now it's a bit of a, a usual sort of case with, with parts nowadays. They do list a plus 20 4.2 piston. Um, we got hold of one, of one of our suppliers. They actually list it as a genuine item um, originally. We got hold of one of our suppliers and they said they got stock, which is very, very rare on these. Um, so we've gone ahead, bored the block at 20 um, and gone to order the pistons. Of course, no stock, back order, which means they're never going to get them. Um, so we're stuck with a block that we bored. In fairness, the block needed boring anyway. So we're in a bit of a catch-22 with it. The first, obviously most expensive option is to line, um, liner the block, which in fairness is gonna be probably 1500 quid or so. Put the top hat liners in and bore it back to standard. But the customer said it wasn't within their budget to do that. So the only other option, and this is obviously on their head be it, um, we have got an original 4.2 standard piston here. As you can see, the bowl is quite deep in the top there. I do believe these run about a 9.2 to 1 compression ratio as standard. That's with a standard head about, I think they're 36cc um, combustion chamber on the standard head. Obviously, we've got a head down here. Um, they've been well and truly skimmed in the past, uh, as of many of these heads. Um, but what we've got here is a 3.9 piston, which is the same bore as you can see just by looking at it now that it sits a bit taller. So we've got the same pin diameter. Um, this is a known thing to do. So what we do is we take 60 thou off the bottom and that gives us the correct height from the pin down to the, the bottom of the skirt. Then what we do is we take two and a half mil off the top of here um, to get it to the same height as the original and then we take two mil out of the bowl um, now you might think wow that's a lot um, we haven't got the thickness there but that leaves us then with five and a half mil of thickness on this crown whereas the original one is six and a half mil so that's probably one mil thicker that's five and a half to be honest with you um, on turbocharged stuff we've gone we've gone less thickness than that it's not a race engine it's a you know it's a, a slugger of a Land Rover so We've got, we've spoke to the customer, he's give us the go ahead. We've worked it out that we've got to take 
60 thou off the bottom of the skirt to give it this, make it the same as the original. We've got to take 100 thou off the outer edge, which is two and a half mil. That'll bring the top down to the same level as the original. And we have got to take from there two, your 80 thou, two mil out of the bowl. Um, we're going to take the bowl out. So we've got five mil of thickness at the edge and we're going to sort of steepen the chamfer down to the bowl from the outer edge. So this is one that I've done. If we compare that to an original, you can see now they stand the same height. So the pin from the pin to the bottom is the same and from the pin to the top is the same. Now, what I've done here, I've took it out five mil. The reason for that, the piston ring groove is probably about two and a half, about three mil deep. Um, so we certainly don't want to come out as far as the, the piston groove, because that's going to make it a sort of weak area there. Um, so I've worked it out. We have a sort of, cal I've got a calculator. I can work it out with a, cal you know, with my formula, but I've got a, a, a sort of program on my computer there where I put in the, the dimensions and the areas and volumes and what have you, and it works out the compression ratio. So next step. Here is one of the cylinder heads. Now, as standard, these bowls here, with a plug-in obviously, these bowls are meant to be 36cc volume. Now what I do, you can see I've, I, did this, I did this earlier on, you can see it's leaked out now, um, but what I do is I grease up around the cylinder head and I use this bit of Perspex here um, and get a good seal so nothing leaks out. Um, I drill two holes, one in the centre and one up on the steeper edge and dust to sort of let air out and you can see there we've got a fluid in there um, now this dark fluid is just a paraffin it's some dirty paraffin actually out of our out of our tank there so i suppose some of you guys in the comments will have a field day with that but we are going to strip and clean this um, and it's just so i can see if it's leaking out because it's dark we can just see it a little bit better um, so what we're going to do what we've done is we've filled that up we fill it right up until all the air comes out of this hole and the fluid just starts to come out of that hole and we measure the cc's we put in. So the way I do it, you can get a big sort of pipette to do it, but I've got these little syringes here which hold two mil at a time and I just inject two mil into there each time until it fills up. Um, so I've done that and I've worked out that that has got 27 cc's. So if we just head off into the office. So this is the calculator I'm going to use. It's on the internet here. It's actually on a V8 website. Um, so in here you've got the standard values apparently for... You haven't, you will do when I reset it. The standard values here for a 3.9. <coughs> so... I, I normally do this, you know, with my formula, but if we just use this so you can sort of see what I'm doing, I'll explain it very slightly. You've got the standard bore size. So the 3.9 is the same as the 4.2 at 88.9. You've got the stroke over here. So that's the stroke for the 3.9. You've got the chamber volume in the cylinder head. Um, you've got, which actually, is 27. You've got the chamber volume in the piston, which on the standard 3.9 is 20 cc's. You've got the distance from piston to deck, so that'll be zero on this will be will mean the outside of the, the piston is flush with the block face. You've got the gasket thickness, one mil of standard. You've got the distance from the compression ring to the top of the piston, which is 4.2. And then you've got your atmospheric pressure and, and so on. And that's about it. So if we calculate that ratio, that there is what the standard compression ratio is on the 3.9. <clears throat> now, so what the mod we've just done there on the piston is obviously not going to be as much as the original um, because that mod there really is to sort of to get to get that compression ratio there you would need to use I think it's the four 
four and a half litre or the four point, I can't remember what it is, but it's, they, there's one cylinder head you can use that's got a 36 cc chamber volume in the head. Um, so with the piston that we've just used, or, or we've just machined, we have got a 10 cc volume now. We're gonna use a 1.5 millimeter gasket um, the ring to the top of the piston is the same. Uh, we have bored it to 89.4 and the stroke is 77. And that is all that's different. Now, first of all, this compression ratio here on the originals, I think they're pretty much designed to run on American fuel. So anything between nine and nine and a half to one is good on pump fuel over there, which is 91 octane. But obviously over here, the lowest we got is 95. So if we run a super unleaded, you can run up to 12 to one, um, providing it's obviously set up right. So if we calculate the ratio we've got, we've got 11.36 to one. So even on standard pump fuel over here, 95 is gonna be absolutely fine on that. So what I'm gonna do is recommend to the customer that he runs a super unleaded, the same as I do on all these classic petrol engines. I say, look, just run super unleaded because I don't like this 95 anyway. Um, and we should be well within tolerance there. So that, guys, is how I work out the compression ratio and what we've got to take off the pistons and what have you. As I say, we've modified the pistons at the end of the day. We can only go by experience on the, the crown thickness and all that. But at the end of the day, it is a modified piston. So the onus is on the owner really um, and we've made him fully aware of that but I would say 11.36 to 1 it's going to be fine on 97 um, if worse comes to the worst and he did get knock up for any reason then he's going to have to use the 36 cc compression um, oh, sorry cc heads but I think we'll be absolutely fine on that the early jag block as you can see we've had to bore that to 60 like I said in the previous video I've just finished the last bore now, so we're gonna get this off the boring bar, put it over the hone, and we're gonna finish honing it. Um, the customer has sent the end plate, which goes on the end there, because as you know on the Jags, you've got the end cover, the timing chain cover that goes on the end, and you must put that on there because it is dowelled and face the block with that on. So that'll be the next step. Um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna face it first, um, and then we'll hone it. And the reason for that, as I've said to you before, is so that we don't cover the block in honing oil and then we face it, because obviously that just saves a cleaning process. So yeah, we'll get that done in a second. All the rest of the bits are here. So we've got to, I think John's ground the crank by the looks of it. it must have been what he was doing yesterday. <laughs> so he's ground the crank. We've got to go through the head. We've got all the other bits here. We've ordered the crank bearings and the thrusts and the pistons at plus 60. So most of the bits we've got here, um, what we didn't have to order, the customer's got. So yeah, we can crack on, hopefully, the beginning of next week with building this bottom end. All we're waiting for on this is this bottom chain pulley. Uh, slight back order on this, so we hopefully get this soon, but as you can see, there's a couple of teeth missing there. So that is all we're waiting for to be able to crack on with that thing. As you can see, the head's on the Lotus, cams are in, um, front pulleys all looking absolutely spiffing and lovely. As you can see, our choice with colours sort of goes, I think goes with the front cover. Um, you've got the lovely green block there and everything else is silver. And as I say, once that dark rocker cover's on the top, that's gonna look fantastic. I think if we did this in the original grey, it's all gonna look a bit multicoloured. Um, so, one problem that Paul and I last night when we got this head on um, came across is we got the cams in. Um, because these are high lift cams and they've got a, a fairly, um, fairly steep lift on these cams, what can happen sometimes, and we find this when we've got heads on the bench, not just these, but cam, you know, heads like this with, with steep profiles, is when you put the cams down, if you've got a lobe, a little like this one here, where it's just touching onto the bucket, once you've pulled it down, um, it's, it's actually surprising how much force it takes for that lobe to press down the bucket. So we've had it before where we've 
we put these down, you go to turn it and it's almost like it's lock solid. Now what we've done here, because we haven't timed it up yet, we've put the pistons at sort of half mast, if you like, um, and, the, and the, the marks on the cams, you've got a dot here and a dot there, and also a dot here and a dot there for the inlet cam. So we've got them in the roundabout right position. And so we've pulled these down nice and gently, gone to turn this cam and it's locked solid. So I said to Paul, maybe it's because it's just on the, the start of the lobe. So what I did is slacken it off. I normally slacken it and just turn it slightly and sort of tap the bucket down with a bit of bronze, then pull it down and, and try it then. No, it's still locked solid. What we actually found was these are an ARP stud and nut kit, which it had before. Um, but we've just renewed them, obviously, because we don't know the history of the other ones. Uh, we've pulled it all down and, as I say, this cam locks solid. And what we found was the, the actual washers, the ARP washers that sit underneath the nuts on these three were extremely close to the camshaft. Um, as you can see, the original diameter of the, the washers down there is what they are. That one's missing the locator but this one was actually touching this here and as you can see that was down there but it's it's done it in the past as well so somebody we looked at the old washers and if I just get an old washer that somebody has ground flats on so I thought that is a bit crap um, so what I did was we took undone all the the head nuts I took these three washers off and this one um, and I've clamped them all in between a, a bolt and a nut and I've turned them down um, to the, the actual diameter of the, the nut. And as you can see there now, we've got about, got about one mil clearance, um, but it's more than sufficient to pull the head down on. So basically, guys, the moral of the story is if that was just touching, that could have caused um, rubbing on there. It could have caused sort of swarf to be created and go around the engine and that could have been catastrophe. As I say, the moral of the story is never take anything for granted, never take that because it's a, a, a specific stud and nut kit for the Lotus Twin Cam, it's not necessarily gonna be right, especially with the base circle of this camshaft here, because that's obviously different to the original. Um, but this, yeah, as I say, that is, that's not good at all. So that is why it's so important to go through these old engines, everything you do when you, you take them to bits and you, you reassemble them, go through everything with a fine tooth comb, all the clearances. Um, but yeah, that could have been an absolute nightmare. So my next step on this one is I'm gonna roughly do the timing and set the chain up, and then we're gonna go through our normal steps of doing the ver setting the verniers up on these cams. And then that's pretty much it really on this, apart from waiting for the, the pickup and the new um, the new gauze to go with the pickup, which should be here hopefully Friday, maybe Monday. So a little bit more of an educational video for today, guys. Hope I sort of explain things in simple man's terms. Thanks very much for watching. And until another video, guys, I'm going to be getting married in two days. So wish me luck. Cheers, guys.